We're going to get started in just a few minutes, probably about two minutes, right around six o'clock. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this webinar, Advancing Innovation, How Artificial Intelligence is Reducing Tomosynthesis Image Volume, in partnership with Aunt Minnie. I'm Dr. Susan Harvey, Vice President of Global Medical Affairs in the Breast and Skeletal Health Division at Hologic. Hologic is a leading innovator in women's health that provides healthcare professionals around the world with innovative technology based on science allowing providers to detect cancer, biopsy suspicious lesions for definitive diagnosis, and improve patient treatment pathways with precision and confidence. I just want to let everyone know the team on this webinar are all working for home, from home related to COVID-19. So you may hear some unusual noises, my dogs, for example, as we all adjust to the current normal, which brings me to a brief COVID-19 discussion. We're all in uncharted waters, and we do want you to know Hologic is making a difference in the coronavirus pandemic. As one of the world's largest molecular diagnostic companies, we've developed a highly accurate test for COVID-19. This assay is now commercially available for use under the FDA's emergency use authorization. With help from BARDA, we responded to this public health need as rapidly as possible, and we believe availability of our new test will provide sorely needed testing capacity. We recognize that these are unprecedented times, and Hologic is here for support with virtual access to e-learning tools and information such as this webinar. So let's get started with today's session. Before I came to Hologic, I spent 30 years practicing in breast imaging in academic settings. The last 15 years were at Johns Hopkins, where I was the director of breast imaging for seven years. Based on my years of clinical practice, I understand the challenges facing breast imagers today. At Hologic, we are focused on providing reliable, accurate, and efficient solutions across the breast health continuum from risk assessment for screening and diagnostic imaging to biopsy, surgery, pathology, and radiation oncology. We have a platform of new and growing software solutions based on deep learning and AI. During this webinar, you'll hear from Dr. Stacy Smith-Foley, a leading breast imaging specialist and the medical director of the Breast Center at Cardi in Arkansas, as well as Dr. Ashwini Surasagar, chief scientist 
for clinical solutions at Hologic. We're very fortunate to have Dr. Smith Foley, who has had more than a decade of clinical experience specialized in breast imaging. She's been an early adopter of digital breast tomosynthesis. Further, she's been a luminary for launching DBT programs at a variety of breast imaging facilities throughout her career. In her current role as medical director at CARDI, she heads a program notable for delivering exceptional patient outcomes and experience. Dr. Foley is one of the first physicians to be using Hologic's new 3D quorum imaging technology. Based on advanced artificial intelligence algorithms, the 3D quorum technology provides the same accuracy as one millimeter tomosynthesis images while simultaneously reducing by two thirds the number of images radiologists need to review. The time savings is an average of one hour per eight hours of image interpretation time, yet the accuracy of interpretation is, pre is preserved. We are also fortunate to have with us Dr. Ashwini Shurasagar. With 14 years of experience in medical imaging and clinical research, as well as a passion for artificial intelligence and breast imaging, Ashwini serves as chief scientist for clinical solutions at Hologic. She has a tremendous understanding of how deep learning algorithms operate. We'll start today's session by discussing the current use of artificial intelligence in radiology. Then we'll provide an introduction to Hologic's new 3D quorum technology powered by Genius AI, explaining how the machine learning technology works. Then we'll hear key insights from Dr. Smith Foley about her experience adopting and using this technology. It is our hope that you will come away from this session with a better understanding of Hologic's 3D quorum and how this technology is improving patient care and efficiency. Artificial intelligence is influencing breast imagers now and will continue to augment our skills in the future. Every day, new research and developments are creating tools that will make our interpretations more accurate and efficient. Artificial intelligence will never replace the skills that breast imagers have, yet AI technologies can augment and assist us, providing the opportunity to change workflow and potentially spend more time with our patients. This is a journey and we're just beginning down the path. Like any of the other changes in breast imaging, and there have been a lot in my career, from film screen to full field digital, to digital breast tomosynthesis, believe it or not, biopsies, breast MRI, and contrast enhanced mammography. It shows my age when I list that. AI adoption will require thoughtful integration, which will be informed by breast imagers to allow us to understand how AI tools can be optimized. As with all integrations and adoptions of new technology, there will be challenging transition periods and learning curves that can have short-term effects on a practice. However, these growing pains are essential and we will learn so much to inform our future. Along the way, patients, technologists, and radiologists will find benefits to achieve improved outcomes and patient satisfaction, as well as efficiency. We all anticipate growth in artificial intelligence applications in radiology generally, and in breast imaging specifically. At Hologic, we're working each day on innovations in this space. The results are AI innovations like 3D Quorum, which is FDA approved and being integrated into breast imaging practices around the US. Our early data shows these technologies will ensure confidence and help radiologists make the best decisions for every patient. Artificial intelligence technology is being developed to improve patient outcomes and patient satisfaction. These tools, excuse me, these tools 
will augment the radiologist by increasing efficiency and decreasing fatigue. While digital breast tomosynthesis is becoming the preferred standard for breast imaging in today's world, we all know the detailed slices that allow radiologists to better detect cancer and decrease recalls have also increased strain on breast imagers. Building on Hologic's 30-year history in breast health, 3D Quorum is the first innovation from Genius AI, our new core artificial intelligence technology that will integrate across the breast care continuum. The application of Genius AI technology to Hologic's, Hologic's products will enable earlier cancer detection, help clinicians and administrators to do their jobs better and more efficiently, and provide insights to direct the patient pathway. By decreasing the number of tomosynthesis images and identifying clinically relevant regions of interest, 3D Quorum is a step in the direction of assisting breast imaging with more accurate and timely interpretations. As noted by breast imagers like Dr. Smith Foley, 3D Quorum increases efficiency and decreases fatigue. Dr. Shurisagar will provide background and an overview of 3D Quorum. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. What a wonderful introduction and a nice segue into going over some of the key clinical details of this 3D quorum technology. As we know, uh, and as Dr. Harvey already mentioned, Hologic has been a pioneering manufacturer for being a revolutionary technology like tomosynthesis to the market. Tomosynthesis has proven to be the technology that offers simultaneous increase in, in sensitivity as well as specificity to screening mammography when compared with the conventional FFTM techniques. Very few techniques in breast imaging have had such a double advantage. In addition, it has also proven to find 40% more invasive cancers as compared to FFTM. However, to take advantages of these tremendous benefits, the radiologists have to scan through hundreds of tomosynthesis slices in place of simply four images in FFDM as it used to be. This can be challenging in terms of reading time as well as can create fatigue. We at Hologic identified this concern very early and started thinking about how we can reduce the number of slices that need to be reviewed. Therefore, we introduced this technology of 3D Quorum, which is driven by our genius AI platform to reduce the number of slices to be read by 66%. This in fact has proven to reduce the reading time by about 10 to 15%, which is a saving of an hour each day. In addition, there are also tremendous advantages on infrastructure due to the reduced number of uh, slices, which means re reduced amount of data in terms of storage space, as well as network traffic as the images are moving from acquisition workstation to the packs and the review workstations. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, we can now see how 3D quorum technology reduces the number of slices. One can simply average the number of slices or drop the number of slices to show fewer slices. But it is crucial that when you reduce any data, in process of reducing such slices, we don't want to lose any clinically relevant information. Therefore, we have an AI-driven synthesis algorithm that combines the pixels from six slices into just one slice, but without losing any relevant clinical information. We will understand the details of how AI plays a role in this in just a few minutes. But as shown in this schematic here, each slice of 3D quorum images is generated from six slices of one millimeter tomo, making a six millimeter thick smart slice. To generate a subsequent smart slice, however, we keep an overlap of three slices and repeat this process. This overlap ensures the continuity on, of information and a smooth transition from one smart slice to the next one. Thus, when all the one millimeter slices are processed by 3D quorum 
software in such manner, we get a stack of smart slices that contain only one third of the original number of slices. And each parameter in this process has been carefully chosen with a lot of experimentation and image reviews by various experts. As a part of development process of this product, we attempted various combinations such as five slices with no overlap, 10 slices with five slices overlap, and so on. And it was very clear from the get-go that we really needed an overlap for maintaining continuity. And we also learned very uh, quickly that the combination of six slices with the three slice overlap was turned out, turning out to be the most optimal combination, which would give us the significant reduction in number of slices, but while still maintaining all the clinically relevant information, even in the subtle features of the images. Now, Dr. Foley, Dr. Smith Foley will share her insights about this product as an early adopter. Thank you, Dr. Shirsagar, for the overview of this new AI-powered technology. At the Breast Center at Carti, our team is always striving to provide the best patient care possible. This attitude and commitment has driven me to launch various digital breast homosynthesis adoption programs during my career, as well as now become an early adopter of 3D Quorum technology. CARTI is a community-based cancer center that is cancer-focused and patient-centered. We are dedicated to providing the latest technological advances in diagnostic imaging for our patients. We were excited to have the opportunity to adopt this technology after our wonderful experience with high-resolution 3D mammography. Based on my experience, there are three main topics related to 3D quorum that I'd like to highlight today. First, we'll talk about smart slices, the six millimeter slices generated by 3D quorum technology, and the impact of genius AI. Second, we'll discuss the time efficiency improvements offered by the technology benefiting both the radiologist as well as IT systems. Lastly, as Dr. Harvey referenced earlier, I'll be talking about my personal experience adopting 3D quorum technology in my practice in day-to-day -day workflow, including the learning curve I encountered, as well as my recommendations for other healthcare professionals looking to incorporate this technology into their practices. Next slide. Although they provide essential insights, going through the typical one millimeter slices generated by digital breast tomosynthesis all day long can really become arduous and contribute to reader fatigue. As a breast imaging specialist, I spend an immense amount of time looking through mammography images, searching for suspicious abnormalities, which are often subtle. As I've integrated 3D quorum technology into my practice, I've spent time reading both the standard one millimeter slices and six millimeter smart slices for some of the same cases. In doing so, I've really gotten a firsthand look into the differences between the two and can attest to the smart slices allowing for a more efficient reader experience. I've also found calcifications to be more conspicuous, highlighting areas and details that you want your eye to be drawn to when reviewing breast images. Before I started using the technology, looking for and identifying calcifications was somewhat of an eye test, which can be quite taxing and requires an immense amount of focus and time. Having spent time comparing standard one millimeter slices and six millimeter smart slices for a number of my cases, I feel confident that 3D quorum isn't identifying any pseudocalcifications, nor is it missing any important details, but rather provides accurate and essential insights. My early use of the uh, synthesized view, views with high resolution 3D mammography did show a lot of pseudocalcifications. So I was a little bit skeptical 
when I was initially adopting this new technology. But I have found in clinical practice that I am able to see calcifications, that they tend to be sharper, that my eye is drawn to them due to the processing algorithm. I've also noticed that some masses, oval, equally dense, circumscribed masses, are more conspicuous on these smart slices due to the slabbing effect. I also was initially a little bit concerned about patients with small breasts that compressed very thinly that we might be losing data, but have not found that to be the case. Not only do the smart slices provide enhanced insights and information, but their sheer existence reduces the number of images I need to go through. We will now show some examples so you can actually see the difference. Next slide. In this case, there is an area of architectural distortion in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast seen on the CC views. This ended up being a uh, invasive ductal carcinoma grade one. Next slide. The uh, area of architectural distortion is less conspicuous on the MLO projection. Next slide. So these are the uh, individual slices uh, through the digital breast tomosynthesis stack, comparing the one millimeter slice on the left to the six millimeter smart slice on the right. And you can see that the area of architectural distortion is enhanced and is more conspicuous with these smart slices. Next slice. And this is the same comparison between the one and six millimeter slices on the MLO projection. You can see when we focus in on this area that the speculations extend um, over a longer area than the nidus of architectural distortion centrally. And this appears to be more conspicuous with the smart slice. Next case. We'll show you how these, uh, the one millimeter slices appear in the Cine mode. On the left. And contrast that now with the one millimeter slices or the six millimeter slices, smart slices on the right. So your eye is seems to be drawn to that area of architectural distortion on the smart slices, and you're really not missing any data. You can even see the single focus of calcification centrally within the nidus of architectural distortion. Next case. This is a group of calcifications in the upper inner quadrant of the left breast. Next slide. This is the MLO projection. Next slide. So this is a slab from the tomosynthesis stack comparing the one millimeter images on the left with the six millimeter smart slices on the right. And you can see with the smart slices, the calcifications are a little bit more crisp. They're a little bit brighter and more conspicuous. Next slide. We can see the same comparison on the MLO projection. We'll now cone in to see the area of interest in better detail. And this uh, was an area of DCIS. We also can demonstrate on the next slide the Cine version of the one millimeter tomosynthesis slices in the CC projection. And we'll contrast that with the Cine review of the six millimeter smart slices. So you're only having to review one third as many images and the calcifications do stand out even when you're reviewing the images in Cine mode. The next case is an area, it's a mass with associated calcifications 
in the upper inner quadrant of the left breast. And this is um, the CC projection. Next slide. And here's the same finding in the MLO projection. Next slide. We'll compare and contrast the one millimeter and six millimeter smart slices. And as we cone in, we're not losing any data. And we begin to see with the smart slices that the, the margins of the mass are microlobulated and there is some associated architectural distortion. The calcifications associated with the mass appear more conspicuous. Next slide. The same comparison in the MLO projection. And we'll cone in on the area of interest and see that there is architectural distortion and an associated speculation along the anterior margin of the mass. And, and you see that to a, a better advantage with the smart slices on the right. And this was another invasive ductal carcinoma. Ashwini, can you tell us a little bit more about the impact and application of Genius AI? Yeah, absolutely. So um, thank you very much for sharing your clinical experiences and insights uh, on these products. Um, and uh, walking us through some great illustrations here. As you pointed out in several of your clinical images, Smart slices generated by 3D technology not only preserve all the clinical information from one millimeter slices, but it also enhances some of the most crucial information. And let's find out now why. At the heart of this technology is AI-based algorithm that is trained on a large set of abnormal as well as normal tomosynthesis image sets. Let's see how AI helps combine this information from six slices to one slice and still preserve the information. As a part of 3D quorum technology, an AI algorithm actually scans through all the image data from one millimeter tomo slices and identifies the locations that are typically of interest from clinical perspectives. This algorithm looks for features such as bright spots that could represent calcification clusters, radiating lines that could represent speculated masses and architectural distortions, and densities that could represent round and lobulated masses. So the algorithms makes notes of each X and Y location, as well as the slice number of such regions of interest. And when it comes to combining the slices, this algorithm performs an intelligently weighted mathematical operation where the locations with potentially relevant information get more weightage compared to the rest of the slices on that particular location. And now as an example, as shown in this picture, um, there, are, there is, a, imagine there is a speculated mass on the slice number three out of the six that we are trying to combine here. And during the combination process at this inferior region where the mass is located, a relatively higher weight is assigned to the slice number three compared to the slices above and below it. This ensures that the resulting small slice, smart slice does not lose any information due to overlapping structures. Uh, Dr. Fo uh, Dr. Ms. Smith Foley, could you now please take us through some of the advantages that you have noticed in your clinical practice due to the reduced number of slices? I sure can. One of the biggest improvements I have identified is time efficiency for both myself as the interpreting radiologist, as well as improvements in our workflow within our IT infrastructure. 3D Quorum provides time-saving benefits in two main ways. It allows the radiologist to be more efficient while also lightening the burden on the information technology systems and infrastructure in our department. While the one millimeter slices of the high resolution 3D digital breast tomosynthesis provided improved uh, detection of calcifications and areas of architectural distortion, the file sizes were large. And this created some inherent issues 
with our workflow and efficiency in my breast imaging center. We had delays in sending images from the acquisition workstation to the review, uh, to the secure view workstation. We had delays in, in image retrieval, and we had some issues in trying to share our images with other institutions due to the size of the files. We, we found it very difficult to find a format in which we could share the digital breast homosynthesis images and ultimately ended up only sharing the synthesized views and not the DBT stacks uh, with our referring surgeons and outside referring providers. Since adopting this technology, we have noted a two-thirds reduction in file size. We have not had any issues with image retrieval. We are now able to share complete data sets with referring providers through a third-party uh, cloud-based image sharing program. We use PowerShare in our practice. Um, before adopting this technology, I would often have to wait for the images to come to the SecureView workstation to review and the technologist would be sitting uh, waiting or they would, they would kind of waste time and do some other tasks while we were waiting for the images to come to the review station. But with the use, using 3D Quorum in our practice, by the time the patient or by the time the technologist completes her imaging and she walks from the mammography suite to my office, the images are already available for me to review on the SecureView workstation. I have noted approximately a one hour improvement in my overall efficiency during the day. Um, there has, there is, has been improvement in the workflow of our center. We have one ultrasound suite so uh, the faster I'm able to review the mammogram images, the quicker the patient can be then taken to ultrasound. Um, it seems just anecdotally that the technologists are not sitting around waiting for image review um, as much as they were in the past. And I think that this has been able to provide me more flexibility within my schedule and, and a, more time in my day to really sit and speak with patients, which is one of the main reasons I chose to become a breast imager. Dr. Shursagar, can you share some more information with us about how this improves efficiency for the radiologist? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that insight. This is so much in line with uh, what we expected when we developed this product and it's very gratifying to hear it. Uh, so now let's see how smart slices are slightly different from the other methods of slabbing. This illustration shows a speculated mass on the top row and a subtle calcification cluster in the bottom row. What we are seeing in here uh, is on the left column, there is a lesion that is shown on one millimeter tomo slice. In the middle, we can see the same lesion using a generic slabbing technique that is available as a generic tool on various uh, reading workstations. This technique is often referred as MIP or maximum intensity projection, and which is a very passive technique where you simply take a maximum value of each pixel to generate a slab. On the right, on the other hand, you can see the same region on a smart slice that is generated by 3D quorum technology which is driven by information from Genius AI. Now you can see that the fine speculations in this legion can get totally fuzzy if you combine the information in a brute force manner such as MIP rather than driven by AI. One can easily miss such legions if you're scrolling fast uh, because it doesn't stand out like it does on the right on the 3D quorum image. Uh, you, similarly, you can see that the calcifications are a little bit enhanced on the 3D quorum image and they can in fact get fuzzed on a brute force technique like MIP. Hologic has also verified the safety and effectiveness of this 3D quorum technology by conducting an MRMC reader study as per FDA guidelines, which has proved 
that there is no difference in diagnostic performance of readers while using one millimeter tomo slices versus using 3, 3D Corum smart slices. This gives us tremendous confidence that fewer number of slices are not coming at the cost of any clinical information. But in fact, as Dr. Smith Foley actually uh, demonstrated through several examples, there is anecdotal evidence that 3D Corum images show certain type of lesions better enhanced. The use of three millimeter overlap of this technique also ensures the continuity of the information and the early evidence has shown that this is a winning solution to take advantage of Hologic's high-resolution tomosynthesis technology that has brought the screening mammography to a totally new level. Uh, with this, now I turn to Dr. Harvey and Dr. Smith Foley to take us through some of the notes and insights that are crucial to integrate this technology into clinical workflow. Thank you so much. So insights about the challenges breast imagers face when adopting new technologies, such as transitions from full-field digital mammography to digital breast tomosynthesis are understood and have been experienced. Yet there's an opportunity for breast imagers to adopt new technologies with efficiencies to benefit their practice and their patients. And Dr. Smith fully has examples and she's using this technology in her current day-to-day -day practice. Thank you, Dr. Harvey. Although 3D Quorum has provided me with a number of benefits and will help ensure long-term operational efficiency, there certainly is a learning curve when it comes to the adoption process, as with any new technology. When I first added 3D Quorum to my practice, I was looking at both one millimeter slices and six millimeter smart slices to ensure the new technology wasn't missing anything or providing inaccurate results. After some time, I felt like this process was really slowing me down. So I ended up just ripping the Band-Aid off and fully committed to relying solely on the smart slices. And I haven't looked back. While there is the option to go back and have the technologist resend one millimeter slices on specific cases if there is concern that you're missing data, I have not had to rely on that from the time that I moved fully to the six millimeter smart slices. I have noticed um, anecdotally that areas of architectural distortion are much more conspicuous in patients with extremely dense breasts. I had uh, a case with a eight millimeter invasive duct cancer in a 42 year old patient. Uh, it was her first 3D mammogram and my eye to this area of architectural distortion in the upper outer quadrant of her left breast. And at that time we were reviewing both millimeter and six millimeter slices. And I found that the smart slices really highlighted the area of architectural distortion, helping to draw my eye to that area. In a patient with such a dense breast, that was a finding that have potentially been overlooked and certainly would not have been seen with full field digital mammography. Um, there were definitely some technological issues when I was reviewing one millimeter and six millimeter smart slices. It really put a strain on the IT system and the PACS, uh, the PACS system within my department. And even at one point ground the entire PACS system to a halt. And that was one of the impetus one of the reasons that I eventually ripped the Band-Aid off and moved directly to the uh, six millimeter smart slices fully. Um, I would encourage any other radiologist to consider just starting out with the smart slices and then only having the technologist send over specific cases where there was concern that there was any kind of missing data. But I can say for my my practical 
application of this technology, um, that has not proven to be a real concern or a real issue. Um, I was initially concerned about patients with small breasts whose breasts can press to a very thin uh, thickness, specifically patients with implants and the implant displaced views, but I, have, I did not find any advantage in reviewing the one millimeter slices specifically in those patients. So some things to consider with implementation. One approach would be to send both the one millimeter and six millimeter slices during the transition period. The pros, this will give you the opportunity to directly compare both the one millimeter and six millimeter smart slices and allow the radiologist to gain comfort with the new technology. On the downside, this increases the number of images to review. While I felt very comfortable with the six millimeter smart slices, when the one millimeter slices were in front of me, I felt entirely compelled to review each and every image. This increased my reader fatigue it increased storage and network traffic. And like I said, it ground the packs to a halt at one point. If I had to do it over again, I think I would take the second approach and send only the six millimeter smart slices during the transition period. Uh, you always have the ability to send one millimeter tonosynthesis slices on specific cases if you're concerned that you're missing any data or if you feel that you need them. This would allow the radiologist to, from the outset, feel that reading efficiency, decrease reader fatigue, and you could really test in practical application how this impacts both storage and network traffic. The downside is that you will have to kind of take a leap of faith and commit to this new technology. Well, thank you, Dr. Smith Foley, and thank you as well to Dr. Scherzegar for providing the background and insight on 3D Quorum tonight. It's been very helpful. Um, I do have a few questions, if we could take just a few minutes to ask. Um, my first is for Dr. Smith Foley. Um, Dr. Smith Foley, how is your experience using 3D Quorum influenced your overall opinion of AI in radiology? I wasn't, I've been intrigued by AI and how it might be applied to the field of radiology, but I wasn't really sure how it would be applied to breast imaging specifically. And after using this software improvement, you know, this is just another tool in the toolbox that allows us to find more breast cancers, but at the same time, call back uh, fewer women. I really see in practical application with this, with this tool, I do see that there is an increased conspicuity of calcifications. I see I'm, I'm, my eye is drawn to areas of architectural distortion more. But I've also found that I see masses better um, due to the stacking of the, in, of the images uh, with this software algorithm that really highlights the margin of masses. I also have found that I'm able to better see the relationship of calcifications. Because the, the images are grouped together, you're able to see that calcifications are grouped more easily than on the one millimeter slices. Overall, uh, this has been a, a very good experience and it encourages me that um, leaders in our field like Hologic are not just providing us with a one size fits all solution, but you're continuing to innovate and improve on the tools that you've already given us and this is just another tool in the toolbox that helps us do what we want to do, which is find breast cancer when it's small and most easily treated. 
Well, thank you very much. Um, I have another question for Dr. Shurasagar, um, and that is, as we think about implementing 3D quorums in day-to-day -day practice as breast imagers, how can we be reassured that no information or data is lost when we're creating these smart places? We all want to read faster. We all want to have uh, more time with patients, but can you reassure us that no information is lost during this transition? Absolutely. I think it's a very reasonable concern. Um, anytime you try to go fast, there, there, there is a risk of having some disadvantage. You, you save on the data, there could be a loss of information. So it's absolutely valid question. And that's the reason we put in so much thought into the design of this product when we initially decided that we are going to have this uh, uh, reduction in number of slices. We did a number of experiments and got a lot of uh, reviewers to uh, understand how this reduction in data is actually affecting their perception. And through these experiments, we did come to a conclusion of a certain uh, set of parameters for, uh, for reducing these number of slices. And also, the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the combination is driven by Genius AI. We also have a really high sensitivity Genius AI that drives this engine here. And this ensures that the smallest and the subtlest information in the uh, tomosynthesis one millimeter stack is preserved to make sure we make that uh, region of interest visible properly onto the, tomo, uh, onto the 3D quorum smart slices. Uh, and the third evidence for that is the, the reader study that we performed with 15 readers and over 300 studies uh, almost close to 400 studies to to make sure to make ourselves comfortable in a blinded manner when the readers read with and uh, with uh, 3D quorum and with one millimeter slices we did not see any significant difference between the ROC curve which is the the way we uh, find out if the radiologist can distinguish the uh, benign tissue from malignant tissue we did not find any significant difference in that ROC curve which gives us a confidence that we are not losing any information through this technology. Well, thank you very much. So not only the development ensures us that no information is lost, but the testing that's been done for 3D Quorum has, has reassured us as well. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Smith Foley, there's a question from San Francisco. Um, and the question is, how long, and I'll, I'll go back a slide so we have the two approaches you've described. The question is, how long did you use approach one, reading both one millimeter tomosynthesis slices and six millimeter smart slices during your transition? So I started with approach one, and after about four weeks, I felt comfortable and confident in the new technology to dismiss the one millimeter slices and rely completely on the six millimeter slices. Of course, with adopting any new technology, there was a bit of a transition. Um, in talking with some of my fellow colleagues from across the country, it seems that there are two different camps of radiologists. Some radiologists, when they're reviewing DBT stacks, are scrollers and other, other radiologists are Cine or movie watchers, and I tend to fall in the camp of being a Cine movie watcher. So I have my hanging protocol adjusted so that as I'm reviewing the images, the DBT stack in the Cine mode will play automatically as I'm stepping through each workflow in the process. And I found that there was a bit of an adjustment in the beginning where I had to decrease the speed of the Cine in order to adjust to the smaller stack of images. Um, but over time, it, it became just as seamless as it had been with the one millimeter slices. And I would say 
for those who are scrollers, uh, there would be a similar type adjustment in the speed at which you scroll through the tomosynthesis stack. But within, within four weeks, I was very comfortable with the smart slices. And this was during December, which it tends to be a very busy time in my practice at the end of the year when patients have met their deductible and everybody is trying to get seen before the end of the year. So it was a bit of a trial by fire, so to speak. Um, but by the 1st of January, we were able to fully adopt the smart slices at our center. Well, thank you very much. So approximately four weeks and potentially a different adoption curve for folks who scroll through by hand manually um, versus using the Cine loop. Thank you, that's terrific. Um, so another question has come in, um, Ashwini, um, this is one for you, please. Um, can you provide a little information about the data sets that were used to build the 3D quorum algorithms and also to train the 3D algorithms? Oh uh, yes, absolutely. So um, as uh, as uh, any algorithm, the AI algorithm, 3D quorum algorithm also was so-called train on uh, a certain set of data. And everybody knows uh, in the AI world that the AI is as good as the data is. And as the larger the data set, the more generic the AI is because it can accommodate different types of, for example, in our case, breast tissue, different types of densities. So when we built our database, we were very conscious about all these variations. And who else but Hologic has access to a larger variety of data because Hologic has been having the largest market share in, in uh, tomosynthesis. So we built up a data set of several thousands of studies which have a variety of uh, abnormal as well as normal tissue. On the abnormal side, we also had a lot of uh, consecutively collected biopsy proven cancers and biopsy with proven benign cases. We also had several recalls and negative cases when we developed this algorithm to tune various parameters. Um, and all our data came from all across the United States from over 20 uh, clinical sites. So uh, to summarize, the data that was used to train has a wide variety of variation in terms of breast structures, ethnicity, as well as the breast density composition of the population. Well, great, thank you. So, so that begins um, the, the story of why an algorithm and 3D quorum is so completely different than just, as you've described, the brute force of making a slab where we overlap simply on a workstation those images. And thank you very much. That's tremendously helpful. And Dr. Smith Foley, um, one more question has come in for you. Uh, is 3D quorum something that you think would benefit all types of breast imaging facilities, large versus small, urban versus rural, or do you find that a, it may benefit a particular demographic or type of practice better? I honestly think it would benefit any type of practice, but I can especially see the utility in high volume centers uh, centers that are already using high resolution 3D mammography would probably benefit the most just due to the overall strain of these large file sizes on both the network and, and the overall storage, the PACS storage. I can tell you in my practice, we acquire all of our mammography images in 3D, including our spot uh, our spot views, we do all of our spot compression views in TOMO. The only time we don't use TOMO is if we're doing magnification views for technologists. So the technologists were a able, there's really, there really hasn't been any specific adoption for them. Um, 
we use the smart slices for the spot compression views with Tomo, just like we were using the one millimeter slices with spot compression as well. So I would say that really any center could benefit. Um, thank you. Dr. Well, thank you, Dr. Smith. -Foley. That's fabulous to understand. I, I mean, I think often when we think about adoption, we think, oh, well, um, is there a practice like mine that I could model? So very helpful to understand that this doesn't appear to have an impact on different practice patterns, rather just as a benefit. And I think what we'll do now is uh, we'll close out. And I want to thank all the participants and the audience for joining this webinar and taking the time. If you have additional questions, the way to reach us is printed on the slide that, that you're viewing now. And one way is to go to the website contact at hologicmarketplace.com as written on the website. Of course, you can reach out to your local Hologic representative and ask questions and also visit hologic.com for more information. So again, we want to thank the participants and the audience for their time this evening and we hope we've presented information that helps you understand 3D Quorum. Thank you again and have a good evening.